Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the self-employment health insurance deduction. This deduction goes on schedule one along with so many other deductions, but in this session we'll focus on this deduction and let's assume our self-employed self health insurance deduction is $2,000 and let's assume that's the only adjustments we are going to have. So we're gonna add up all our adjustments and this adjustments, it's gonna transfer to four 1040 on line 10A from Schedule 1, and let's assume this is the only thing, 2000, so that's the only adjustment, and let's assume our income is 50,000, then that's going to give us our adjusted gross income of 48,000. Simply put, this $2,000 of self-employment health insurance deduction, simply put, you paid for your health insurance, and as a result, you got a deduction, that, which is good. And this deduction is for AGI. It means it appeared before you got to your adjusted gross income. As always, I would like to remind you, you have to differentiate between for and from AGI. So everything that comes after this is deduction from AGI. Now, there are certain rules we have to learn about this deduction so not everyone can take their self-employment health deduction and this is what we're going to be talking about today this topic is covered in an income tax course as well as the cpa exam as well as the enrolled agent exam if you are a cpa candidate or an enrolled agent i strongly suggest you take a look at my website farhatlectures.com no i don't replace your cpa review course i can be a useful addition to your cpa review course i can add 10 to 15 points by explaining the material differently Maybe better, maybe not better, but at least differently than your CPA review course. Your risk is one month of subscription. Your potential gain is passing the exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university is doing on the CPA exam. This is a list of all my courses. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. And take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Students that use my system to pass either their CPA exam or their enrolled agent's exam. Like this recording share it with others, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. Let's take a look at this self-employed health insurance deduction. And obviously not everyone can take this deduction. There are certain rules. Otherwise people will take the, will pay for their health insurance and they will get a tax deduction. Okay. Now let's assume you are self-employed. And if you are self-employed, in other words, you don't work for a company because usually when you work for a company, through your employer, you can buy your health insurance. And as a result, you'll get a discount. Why? Because your employer, the company that you work for, foot some of the bill, pays pay part of the bill. Well, payment for health insurance for self-employed individual, their spouse and their dependent are not deductible on Schedule C. So when you have a business, you have a Schedule C, and on Schedule C, it looks like an income statement, and we'll talk about Schedule C later, you'll have your revenues minus your expenses. Guess what? You cannot deduct your health insurance on that schedule. However, what's going to happen is, and we're going to look at the rules, some taxpayer can deduct for AGI, for adjusted gross income, 100% of their self-employed health insurance premium. Now, I really... I, I, I said the example is 2000 Usually the health insurance is quite expensive. So, so let's say $10,000, right? Because uh, I, you know, I should have used a different number. So simply put, if you are self-employed and you bought your own health insurance policy, although you cannot deduct it as a business expense, you can deduct it for AGI, which is, it gives you the same effect, believe it or not. Now, well, the same effect to a degree, of course. The amount of this deduction can be limited in two respects. So simply put, you cannot just pay, uh, you know, $50,000 in health insurance and take the deduction. You might be able to, but you are subject to other restrictions. The first restriction, you are limited to what's called net earning from self-employment. So taxpayer cannot take a deduction for any amount in excess of the net earning from self-employment from the trade, from the business that you are that you are dealing with. What is net earning from self-employment? Net earning from self-employment is taking your gross income, which is your revenue, uh, reduced by your regular expenses. So revenue minus expenses, minus one half of self-employment income, because you self-employment, I'm sorry, not income, self-employment tax, and any deduction for contribution to qualify retirement plans. So if you have any deduction for qualified contribution, you have to take them. And whatever's left, that's the maximum amount you can take, and we'll work an example, 
for your self-employed health insurance deduction. So if you took 50,000, let's assume you paid 50,000 worth of premium, just a, an exaggerated number, and you end up with 30,000 of net self-employment, net earning from self-employment, you are limited to your net earning from self-employment. So that's the first limitation. The other limitation is the availability of other health insurance coverage. Well, just uh, just to simplify things, now let's assume my YouTube business. You know, I, this is what I do for a living, so I'm self-employed. That's not what I do, but let's assume that's the case. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, I am self-employed. Now, let's assume my spouse, my spouse works, which is indeed, she works at Johnson & Johnson. And my spouse is covered by her health insurance. And also, my spouse, she is allowed to cover me. So, her policy says, I can, will cover you, which is my spouse, and will cover your, uh, will cover your husband, and will cover your kids. And under those circumstances, I am entitled to participate in a, let's look at the word, subsidized health health plan. Subsidized health plan, it means the company, Johnson & Johnson, helps my wife foot the bill, helps my wife pay part of the bill. Under those circumstances, I'm not allowed, I'm not allowed to take the deduction. Why? I, I can pay my, I can pay for my, old, for my own health insurance if I want to, but I'm not allowed to take the deduction because I do have the option of participating with my wife and her Johnson and Johnson health care uh, and her Johnson and Johnson health insurance plan. OK, so eligibility for alternative coverage is determined on a monthly basis. What does that mean? It means every month I have to ask myself, do I have a subsidized subsidized health insurance plan? If not, then I can take the deduction. If yes, then I can take it. And what does subsidize mean? Subsidize is when someone other than you pay part of the cost. All the costs or part of the cost. For example, where I work at the college, they pay the majority of the cost for health insurance. It's part of being a professor. Now, they don't pay you a lot, but that's fine. They have a good health insurance coverage, right? So totally, like my plan is totally subsidized, for example. Uh, it's, uh, it used to be 100% subsidized. When I first started working, health insurance was 100% subsidized. I did not have to worry about it. I had a good health insurance. Although the pay is not good, but at least you have that peace of mind. So subsidized is anytime someone helps you participate, uh, help, helps participate in paying the premium for the health insurance. The premium is the cost for the health insurance to have coverage. Let's take a look at an example. Sophia is self-employed and she has a net earning from her self-employment of 17,000 for the year. She has an individual only health insurance policy through her business, which she pays $145 per month. So Sophia wants to protect herself from a health perspective. She's paying $145 a month. Now, an unrelated local business employs Miguel. Miguel is her husband. Miguel employer provide health insurance coverage for all employees and pay $100 toward the monthly premium for each employee. Is this a subsidized plan? Yes, because the employer is paying toward that plan. Well, Miguel is allowed to cover Sophia under his policy, but the couple has chosen not to because the cost would be higher than Sophia's current policy. Sophia said, no, 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 I, I don't want to be covered because I can get the health insurance at a lower cost. Well, in this case, Sophia cannot take the deduction. So she can pay the lower cost, 145, but she cannot pay the deduction, okay? Now, they, they don't tell us how much she has to pay, but it seems it's less than 145, but she cannot take the deduction. I'm sorry, more than 145 for herself. Why? Because regardless whether you choose to take the, to take the subsidized plans or not, the fact that it's available, the fact that it's available, you lose your, deduction. You lose your deduction. In other words, you cannot take the deduction because the plan exists. Now, let's change the scenario a little bit. Let's assume Miguel did not start work until April 1st. Prior to that time, remember Miguel worked for a private company, not with his wife. He was employee of, his, of Sophia's business. And both he and Sophia were covered under a group policy cost $300. So January, February, and March, he was employed with Sophia's business, his, his wife, and for the first three months, and they were paying $300. On April 1st, Sophia changed to an individual policy because he left, he went to that company. How much can Sophia deduct for self-employed health insurance? Remember now, Miguel can now cover her in his new 
at his new company. Well, under those circumstances, Sophia can take $900. Sophia is entitled to deduct the health insurance costs for herself and her spouse for the first three months, January, February, and March, 300 times three. After that time, since she is eligible under Miguel's policy, although it's not economically feasible, the fact that she's eligible to participate in a subsidize, remember the word subsidize, it means somebody else is paying, then she can no longer take any additional deduction. And this is what we meant. You have to visit this uh, this concept every month. Let's take a look at another example. Patrick, self-employed as in, as, and is entitled to participate in a subsidized qualified long-term long care insurance, not health insurance, long-term care insurance, through his wife, Jennifer's employer. Okay, the general health care plan offered by Jennifer employer is not subsidized. So they do have a health insurance plan at Jennifer's business, but that plan is not subsidized. What does that mean? It means Jennifer will have to pull the, the pay the full amount from her own pocket. Now, I'll, I'll give you an example. My first job in a CPA firm, I still remember. I was very excited that I got the job because, you know, I get my foot into a CPA firm. And... The, the salary was decent, it was okay, it was acceptable, minimally acceptable, I'll have to say, okay? But again, when you start in a CPA firm, you, you should be lucky and grateful that you got a job, and I was grateful and lucky. But I did not really read the offer letter very, uh, you know, in details, and the reason is I did not really care about the benefits. I thought they must be decent. And what happened is this, at the CPA firm where I worked is this, as long as you are a staff and a senior accountant, and I believe, yes, staff and senior, the health insurance is not subsidized. In other words, they don't pay anything for your health insurance. They do offer you health insurance, but they don't foot the bill. In other words, the bill that you pay for the whole amount. And I still remember the payment was around, again, if my memory does not fail me, around $450 per check. And that was kind of a little bit hefty for me, but it doesn't matter. I'm glad I went through it. And hopefully this is a lesson for you that when you get a job in a CPA firm, take it. You are going to suffer at the beginning. You have to prove yourself and move on to get your CPA and move on with your life and succeed. But the point is the plan was not subsidized. What does that mean? Not subsidized. It means I have to pay everything for my health insurance. They took, they took the money from my paycheck, but they did not pay any penny toward that health insurance. Now, the partners at that firm did not have to pay a penny because they are partners. The business, the partnership, the company, will, the CPA firm pays for that, okay? So hopefully this is a good example. Now, Patrick is entitled to participate in both health plans. Remember, the insurance, the health care, it's not subsidized because what we care is about the health care. We don't care about the long-term care insurance. He chooses to obtain the, the general health insurance and the qualified long-term care insurance through his own business. He said, you know what? I am not going to participate. I'm going to buy my own long-term care insurance and my own health insurance. Guess what? Under those circumstances, he will be able to deduct the cost for the general health. This is what we're talking about, okay? Subject to income limitation, but he cannot deduct the cost of the long-term care insurance. That's totally separate. That's not health insurance. So notice, although Jennifer's business offered the health insurance, but the plan is not subsidized, okay? So Patrick said, look, you keep it. I'm going to buy my own. And because your plan is not subsidized, I can deduct my health insurance on as an as a deduction on line 16 as part of my uh, as part of my schedule one which is it's going to reduce my adjusted gross income which is going to reduce my taxes okay so the general rule is that if someone else is willing to pay for the insurance coverage fully or partially the premium are not deductible okay here yeah they just say they simply said oh you can buy it through us but we're not giving you any discount we're not paying with you we're not per we're not helping you Therefore, forget about the discount. We're not helping you. We're not contributing to that. So just make sure you know that rule. Uh, FYI, for now, for your own information, for your own information, 
The self-employed health insurance deduction is also available to a partner in a partnership and to a shareholder in an S corporation who owns more than 2% of the stock. And the reason I say FYI for now, because you have to understand how S corporation work, how partnership work. And in case of a subchapter S corporation, wages from the corporation are included in self-employed income for the purpose of, the, of determining the deduction limitation. Because remember, one of the deduction limitation is how much profit you made. So your wages from if you if you're receiving wages from that from that uh, uh, C corp, then that's considered part of your net earning. Don't worry about this. Just know that partners and a partnership and uh, shareholders and an S corporation they are also entitled to this deduction, subject to obviously limitation. Just FYI. At the end of this recording. I would like to remind you that if you're a CPA candidate or an enrolled agent, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. Once again, I don't intend to replace your CPA review course. I'm sure you paid thousands of dollars for it. By all means, keep it. I can help you. I can help you understand it better, make it easier for you. Take a look at my website. Take a look at my resources. Study hard. Good luck and stay safe.